This is a sermon from St. Paul's Church, Brookfield, Connecticut, transforming lives through Jesus. For more information, go to www.stpaulsbrookfield.com. Grace to you, peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Lord, help me. Those three words represent the heart of this message this morning. Lord, help me. I pray that we can all cry out to God with those words, each in our own way, based on whatever we have on our hearts that is troubling us, is concerning us, is leading us to seek the Lord for help because God is a present help, especially in times of trouble. In fact, in ancient Israel, as the book of Exodus describes it, the high priest wore this beautiful breastplate with 12 different stones on it, each representing the tribes of Israel. And in that symbolic breastplate, the priest carried on his heart the people including their cries and their needs and their longings for God's help. Lord, help me. That's what the breastplate signifies, that God is present to help. And the people believed that one day God would send them aside. God would come among them to save them. And Isaiah the prophet put it beautifully in chapter 40, verse 11, when he described it like this. He that is the Messiah will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather up the little lambs in his arms and hold them on his heart. And he will lead those with young. This means that God cares about you and your young ones. When we say, Lord, help me, sometimes we're crying out for ourselves, but very often it's about those in our lives that we're concerned about, including our children, perhaps. And the message is that God cares. And God has come among us to be with us in our struggles, in our pains, in our longings, and to lead us into salvation, into healing. This is why the letter to the Hebrews says this, that Jesus has become our great high priest. He has passed into the heavens, and so we can approach God with faith and boldness and deep, deep love, knowing that we have access to the Father through the Son and the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus described himself as the good shepherd, and he said, I have sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them. Isn't that beautiful? That God's Messiah came to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and has come to the whole world to bring the lost sheep from all over the world throughout all creation and to his loving eternal care. Lord, help me. That is essentially what it sounds like to be a person of faith, right? Prayer is a conversation. As Anglican Christians, we are very much used to formal prayer, which isn't that thing at all. We do it all the time. But when it comes down to it, prayer is simply a conversation with God, and it can be quite crazy to the point. Lord, help me. We can say many times throughout every day, and I hope you do. And I believe God loves that. And God loves the struggle and meets us in the struggle of faith. As we say, Lord, help me, because prayer doesn't always get answered when we one and two does it. But remember that delay is not denial. Delay might just be God's mercy. So let's look at our gospel reading this morning and see how this might be. In this context of Matthew's account, Jesus has recently fed the 5,000. <laughs> and before he fed them, his disciples said, Lord, make them go away. Does that sound familiar? based upon our passage for this morning. Make them go away. Get their own food. Jesus feeds the 5,000. He's under great opposition. Some people would want to make him king, since he can now feed them, it seems. But he knows that his time has not yet come. And so he goes into a different region. The region of Tyre and Sidon, which is modern-day Syria and Lebanon. These are two port 
city is about 30 to 50 miles from where Jesus was at the time. He goes there. And suddenly, Matthew tells us, a woman, a Canaanite woman, begins to shout at him. And what's interesting about this description of her as a Canaanite woman is the fact that that word was not used in that time. That was a word that had fallen out of use. The Canaanite wasn't even on the map anymore. Historically, certainly, the promised land was occupied by people known as the Canaanites. As God's people entered the promised land, they were in conflict with the Canaanites and continued to be throughout many, many years, even up until the time of Jesus. But they weren't called Canaanites anymore. Mark describes this account as a Syrophoenician woman of Greek ancestry. That's more accurate. But why would Matthew describe her as a Canaanite woman? Because he's trying to make the point to his Jewish audience that those that were so far outside of God's reach of the scene might just be brought near. I have sheep that are not of this fold, our Lord said, I must bring them. But at this point, we don't know what's going to happen. All we know is as a Canaanite woman, shouting at Jesus, a rabbi, outside in the street, brothers from here, and with a woman with a daughter who's demon-possessed, she was representing everything that one would want to avoid. And so Jesus does it seem at first. She says, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me, for my daughter is tormented by a demon. Matthew tells us, Jesus did not answer her. Does that surprise you? That our Lord, full of compassion and grace, would not answer this woman in distress? The disciples are watching, and so they say to Jesus, Tell her to go away. She keeps shouting at us. Now, they've seen Jesus heal people before. We don't know what was going on in their minds exactly, but perhaps they wanted her healed so she would move on like the rest of the crowds that would constantly press upon our Lord Jesus. Or perhaps they had their own sense of exclusion based upon how they had been brought up, which was to say that a Canaanite woman shot in the street at our rabbi with the daughter who's unclean. Make her go away, Lord. We're not supposed to be around people like this, nor are you. Jesus, again, seemingly ignoring the woman, looks at the disciples and says, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Indeed, that is why the Messiah came, to save and to seek the lost, beginning with Israel. But as we see, expanding to the nations. For I will give you as a light to the nations, Isaiah prophesied. So what happens next? This woman boils it all down in three words as she knows before Jesus. Lord, help me. Now she shows her faith in the fact that she referred to him with the messianic title. Lord, son of David, that's how she first approached him with her shouting. We've seen others do this in the Bible, like Bartimaeus on the roadside outside of Jericho, who couldn't see but knew it was Jesus. He said, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. This is to acknowledge that this is God's Messiah, this is God's King who's come into the world. And she's exercising faith by acknowledging who he is, but even more so by kneeling before him and saying, Lord, have The word that Matthew uses is the same word he used when he described the Magi coming before the Christ child, where they paid homage to him. This means that this woman wasn't just kneeling, she was worshiping Jesus. As she said, Lord, help me. Notice the absence of pride, self-righteousness, self-reliance at this point. She's kneeling in the dirt, saying, Lord, help me. Now we think at this point, perhaps Jesus would start to show what we think is compassion. Up until this point, he has not answered her. He's been talking only to the disciples. She's watching. And he says, it's not fair to take the children's food and give it to the dogs. Now we might rightfully be confused by this exchange. But again, let's look at the context. 
The children stood. Remember, Jesus has fed the 5,000. He's revealed himself as the coming king who can and can feed as many as he wants. The children's food would be Israel's food. And the Canaanites have been referred historically as a subset of humanity, as dogs, if you will. And yet the word dog, as it's translated, sounds like a dog. But what it really means is a little puppy, a domestic animal that would, in that culture, maybe like a Uber back, take up all the crumbs on the table. Maybe you've had a dog like that before you saw. And so in that culture, as the family would sit at the table, if there were things discarded off the table, the little puppies would gobble them up. And so we can already see that there's a playfulness going on here between Jesus and the woman. Does she take offense? Does she think to herself, well, I never have been called a dog before. She comes back wrestling in faith and saying, yes, but even the dogs get to eat the crumbs under the master's table. At this point, she recognizes that Jesus is the Messiah. She perhaps even understands that salvation comes from the Jews and that the Messianic feast, if it involves a table with God's people, maybe, just maybe, she representing the Gentiles can gather around the edges and take the mercy that overflows, just maybe, Woman, raise your faith, Jesus says. Let it be done for you as you wish. And his daughter, it's really God's daughter, is he? And our children, and those we care about, yes, they're ours for a time, but they're really God. As we say, Lord, help me. May God expand our vision to recognize that God is our Father. That He loves us with an everlasting love and has sent His Son to heal us and save us through the power of His Spirit. And that whatever we carry on our hearts as burdens, we take before the Lord. We give over to the Lord that which is His to begin with. And we say, Lord, help me. Help me release it to you. Help me in my struggle, Lord. And perhaps we say, help me with my lack of faith. And that's an honest approach before the Lord who can handle it. And so God's seeming delay is often his mercy, not a denial of an answered prayer. And many of us have been coming to the throne of grace with boldness about those things in our heart, and the call for us is to not grow weary, to continue to press in, recognizing that whatever obstacles are before us, we are invited to look beyond them to Christ, our healer, Christ our Savior, who longs to gather us and our own, which are actually God's own, in his arms, to hold against his heart, and to lead us gently including our young ones, in the way of salvation. What a blessing we can come together and worship, like the Canaanite woman, to bow our hearts before the Lord and to worship Christ, and to say, Lord, help me. And in that faith, in that longing, in that yearning, we are invited to see God move, to see God heal, See God restore and make all things new. And he does. And he will. And he's with us now as the shepherd of our souls. Do not lose hope. Keep the faith. Share the love. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.